In the last lesson in this series, What Are We Made Of?, we learned about the early contributions of Robert Hooke and Anton van Leeuwenhoek using early microscopes. They uh, started us on this path towards understanding the cellular nature of life on Earth. Hooke coined the word cell to refer to the chambers that he saw in a thin section of cork, and Leeuwenhoek saw cellular organisms, living cellular organisms, in a drop of water. In this lesson, we'll pick up the story with scientists investigating the microscopic structure of plants and animals. Schleiden was a botanist. He was very interested in plants and pretty much put whatever plant tissue he could get a hold of under the microscope. Now, plants, of course, have different structures. They have roots and stems and leaves. Here we see some leaves in a forest after a rain. If we put a leaf under the microscope, this happens to be an aquatic leaf, we see this structure. Notice these rectangular units. These are leaf cells. And so a leaf is multicellular. A plant is a multicellular organism. The cells are stuck together to form a larger structure. By the way, uh, recall that uh, um, Hook put cork tissue under the microscope, but cork was dead. Hook was seeing the empty cells. So all this fluid inside a living leaf cell was not present. In, uh, in Hook's cork tissue. A uh, more magnified uh, picture, here we see the boundary of a single cell would be the cell wall. And again, we have fluid inside the cell. And these green structures are present in leaf cells, but not root cells. These green structures are called chloroplasts, and this is the site of photosynthesis. So sunlight energy is being harnessed here, being captured, and some complex chemistry is going on to produce uh, sugar molecules, the food for the plant. Now under the light microscope, we can record video of leaf cells. So again, this would be an aquatic leaf under the microscope. This is one cell you see here, the boundary of one cell. This is the nucleus of that cell. And we see there is motion. The fluid inside the cell is in motion, carrying the green chloroplasts around. Here we see a scanning electron microscope picture of a cross section through a leaf. And again, we see the cells of the leaf. We're peering inside of a cell, seeing the chloroplasts in these leaf cells. So Schleiden um, made important contributions then in helping us understand that plants are multicellular. And he, he went on to sort of help us understand what's happening uh, in different parts of the plant. So for example, the leaf cells had a different appearance under the microscope compared to the root cells. And he began to suspect that the different appearances were related to the different functions, the different jobs that the cells were performing. So he began to see a plant as a cooperative effort between different kinds of specialized cells. The cells were helping each other. So in this way, he started to think of cells as living a double life. On the one hand, each cell had what it needed to survive. So root cells were surviving. Leaf cells were surviving. However, it was only in virtue of the fact that each cell was helping the other cells survive. So root cells are going to be transporting water up to the rest of the plant, and leaf cells are going to be making sugar and delivering the sugar down to the root cells. So the different cells are performing different jobs, but they're helping each other out. And if they're doing their jobs well, then every cell in the organism has what it needs to survive. So Schleiden and others helped us understand that plants are multicellular organisms. So at this stage then, what do cells do? Well, they build an organism. Here is a tomato plant. It's composed of root cells and stem cells and leaf cells, and they're all cooperating. Another scientist, Theodore Schwann, was interested in animals. And uh, he too then uh, helped establish the fact that animals are composed of cells and so they are multicellular organisms. It took a little longer for scientists to work out that animals were composed of cells because animal tissue is harder to observe under the microscope. You had to harden the tissue and then slice it and then stain it. Uh, so it was, uh, it was more difficult than looking at plant tissue under the microscope. So that delayed the, the, the discovery for a bit. But Schleiden and Schwann together 
uh, persuaded the scientific community that animals and plants are multicellular organisms. Again, like plants, Schwann argued, animals are composed of specialized cells, cheek cells and muscle cells and nerve cells, and they're all cooperating uh, so that the entire organism, the entire animal, can function well. We've already seen muscle cells under the microscope, the cardiac muscle cells. Here we see red blood cells under the microscope. This is a scanning electron microscope picture of a blood vessel with the red blood cells in the blood vessel. Here we see lung cells under the um, light microscope. The stained blue things would be the nuclei of individual cells. So the lung tissue has a lot of empty space in it, and we'll study why that is uh, in future lessons. Uh, we have seen um, hippocampal cells. So this, these are brain cells. So this is the hippocampus on the left and more magnified we can see the individual purple structures are neurons. Here we see a scanning electron microscope picture of a white blood cell attacking the red bacterium. So white blood cells are part of our immune system, our defense. Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body. White blood cells are part of our defense. And in this scene, then, a white blood cell is attacking an invading bacterium. Down here, we see magnification of it. So these uh, white blood cells actually sort of feed on bacteria. They will engulf them and destroy them, much like sort of an amoeba uh, eats its prey. Now, bacteria don't have a nucleus. We'll, we'll learn this later. They do have DNA. All living cells have DNA. We'll learn much more about that later. But uh, you can see, obviously, the size difference between these two different kinds of cells. Our body cells are much bigger than bacteria cells. Here we see low-power uh, light microscope picture of cheek cells. So a student has scraped the inside of their cheek and put that smear on a slide and then stained it with a blue stain. And this is what we see. Confirmation that the human animal is composed of cells. Let's take a look a little bit higher power. We can start to see the individual cells a little better and the little stained blue structure inside each cheek cell is the nucleus of the cell. Here we see three cheek cells stuck together and of course this is this would be a tissue then. So the inside of the mouth would be this tissue composed of these cells. So again, at this stage, what do cells do? They build organisms. Plant cells are build the plant. Animal cells build the body of the animal. But cells were not just structural units. They were doing something within the boundaries of the membrane. What were they doing? That's the question we'll try to answer in the next lesson.